18 years ago today, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom version 1.0 was released. And what I wanna do in this video is look at some technology from that time and actually import pictures into Lightroom 1.0, install it, play with it, and see just how far we've come in almost 20 years. Let's do it. So first off, here is a photo of me 18 years ago. I was in high school and I remember when Lightroom was announced. I actually used the Lightroom beta before the version 1.0 release and I loved it. Lightroom was like one of those programs that we all were just so excited for. Having worked with Photoshop for years, back then I even assisted Photoshop a little bit for some teachers and it was a great program. Photoshop still is an amazing program, but Lightroom really changed the game as far as the ease of use in the Adobe ecosystem with editing and more importantly with organizing photographs. So let's take a look at some of the technology from around the release time of Lightroom. So here we actually have the boxed copy of Lightroom 1.0. We can see I bought this on eBay. Here it is on a, on a disc. We're gonna install this in a couple minutes. So really cool. And activated with a serial number on the back. I'm not gonna show you because that's my serial number. Pretty cool, I did already test this. It activated perfectly, it opened, everything worked great. So we've got our copy of Lightroom One there. For a camera, we have the Canon 5D, the original 5D. I actually went out and shot some photos with this a couple weeks ago, it was super fun. Uh, I used modern, you know, standard, the lenses that I use on my Canon camera now, not RF, but EF lenses. Everything worked great. Um, this camera, you can see the screen by today's standards is fairly small, it's not a touch screen. Uh, you know, old buttons, it just has that feeling. Fun fact. I think that the sensor in the Canon 5D, the original one, is one of the best sensors as far as color rendition technology of any digital camera ever. I love the pictures off this camera. And of course, back in the day, and even some cameras now, we recorded to compact flash cards, not CF Express, not uh, XQD, no. Good old CF compact flash cards we got a 16 gig card there. So I went out and took some pictures. That's what we're gonna get imported into Lightroom. Finally, my favorite part of old tech. This is the actual laptop that I used back in 2007 to edit with Lightroom One. Now, I unfortunately sold mine a few years after I bought it, but back in eighth grade, it was the first year that I worked a summer job and I saved all summer long, every penny of my summer money to buy this computer. And you can see, this is a 12 inch Apple PowerBook G4. And some of the amazing things, for one, it's so thick by today's standards which I just love. Um, and some of the portage is funny. You know, we've got like our dial-up modem, still have Ethernet, Firewire 400, USB 2. Um, this is actually a mini DVI port, audio interface, Kensington lock, pretty amazing. And then the charge port over here. But what I think is the best part about this thing is just the trackpad. Like truly shows us how far trackpad technology has come when this will like literally fit three of my fingers on the entire trackpad. Amazing, amazing stuff. Some fun specs that I think are cool. Uh, this PowerBook G4 has a single core 1.5 gigahertz processor. So if you know about CPUs and processors and how those work, that is like laughably slow by today's standards. But again, it's been 20 years, right? Also, it has 1.25 gigabytes of RAM, so literally 1 64th of what my computer today has. Uh, amazing, my editing computer today. And finally, it has an 80 gigabyte hard drive. Also, fun fact, on the other side, we have an actual slot loading super drive that can read and write DVDs. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later when we go to install Lightroom. Also, this is totally like a Tech Nerds Unite video, right? If you were into tech around this time or you are still into tech, drop a like down below. Also, let me know what your favorite computer, if you had one, in the 2005 to 2010 range was. There were a lot of amazing computers. Apple itself was making a big switch from PowerPC to Intel CPUs. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to see what your favorite computer of this time frame was. Tech nerds unite, woo! Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get Lightroom installed. So first thing we're gonna do is take the disc and throw it into our super drive. So I'm gonna be quiet now so we can hear this magical sound. Love that noise, it's such a good sound. Uh, another one of those like, I, I know I've already done this because I, I opened it up, made sure that everything was gonna work with this video, but that sound like took me by surprise. Like, oh yeah, I haven't heard that in years. All right, so here we have the Lightroom 1.0 disc showing up on the desktop. If we double click this, I actually was really surprised at some of the cool stuff 
uh, that was on this disk. So obviously we'll go to the PKG file to actually install Lightroom when it comes time. Um, but I, I read through this readme and this was really cool. There's a lot of really neat information on here. Um, for one, it's an HTML file, so it still works, right? We can still open it in a, in a browser, um, but the minimum requirements were pretty cool to see kind of what, uh, you know, display minimum 1024 by 768 monitor resolution. Lightroom was built with this in mind, right? Understanding that this was the average size um, of a screen back then. Um, going into the supported files, uh, particularly though, there's this whole section on uh, Lightroom beta users and how beta users could get ready for the full release. And one thing I actually didn't remember um, was that in the beta, they, they called folders shoots. So the, the panel on the left, the folders panel, uh, was actually called the shoots panel back in the beta. And when I read that, I remembered back to the beta, like, yeah, sure enough, it was called shoots. And they renamed it folders before the official release. One other useful thing in here is if we go to documentation, uh, this is a 122 page PDF help manual that's right here on the installer as well. So anyway, I thought that was kind of cool to show Share. Um, let's go ahead and double click this PKG file and get Lightroom installed. All right, here we are, we are installed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and eject the disc here again. We wanna be quiet. Oh. Such a good sound. Just the like, I feel like there's that like tactileness uh, that discs had that we just don't get anymore. And I miss, ooh, even that sound like, ah, it's good, it's good stuff. All right, let's go ahead and get Lightroom launched. So I'm gonna go up to Finder and we're gonna go to Applications and then inside of Applications, we're gonna scroll on down and double click on Lightroom and we'll launch into Lightroom 1.0. Um, no no uh, library was found because it's my first time starting the program, so I'm just gonna click Create New Library, called a library instead of a catalog like it's called now, uh, but same idea. You need a Lightroom catalog or a Lightroom library in order to function inside of what's now Lightroom Classic. So here we are inside of Lightroom 1.0 and a couple quick things I noticed. For one, the module picker, right? There's no map module. Uh, there's also no book module, right? Those did not exist. Um, in addition, there's no find bar up at the top, right? I've kind of gotten used to seeing the little search bar up at the top of the grid view. Well, there was actually a find panel back then. So you would actually use the find panel to look for and filter through the images that you were looking for. So I don't wanna nerd out with preferences too much, but preferences obviously have changed a lot. I could spend the whole video just nerding out on what there is in there. Uh, but one thing I wanna show is inside of preferences, I believe in later Lightroom versions, there was more of options here. Um, but this right here, this is called a panel end mark. I think this one's called the flourish panel end mark. Uh, but you could change these. You could, you could change what they looked like. Um, I think Lightroom One only has a couple options. If we go to preferences and interface, yeah, panel end marks, here's flourish. There's also box, uh, which puts a little box there. But I do believe there were more options in future versions of Lightroom. I don't remember for sure, but I seem to remember that being a fairly long list. Uh, but Flourish, like it, it was cool, right? You could like change what your end mark looks like. I think they had custom ones at 1.2 where I, I knew a few photographers, they had like their own drawing that they put at the base of their panels. Nerdy Forest at 15 years old was all about those little, little bits that you could customize inside of the program. All right, let's go ahead and get some images imported into Lightroom 1.0 and take a look at the import window. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my compact flashcard and stick it into my card reader and we'll get these photos in. All right, and here is the import dialog box. Looks very different than what it looks like now. Uh, very much kind of looks like the export dialog box does now, um, but very same options here. So file handling, we can copy photos to a new location or copy photos as DNG. Um, I remember I, I've I recommended to students for years to convert to DNG um, on import, but I remember when this first came out, it was like a total new thing and uh, people needed a lot of learning and still do about what DNG is and the advantages and disadvantages. I'm gonna go with just the standard copy and let's bring these in. Now let's do note that these are 12 megapixel files, which for the time were fairly big, right? Uh, Canon 5D, it's full frame, 12 megapixels. So it's gonna take it a little bit of time to get all these images imported.
All right, and we can see that the import process has completed. Um, if I go into Finder and I go to my pictures folder, we can see here we've got a couple new folders for 2024 and 2025, and inside of these are the actual CR2 files themselves. Those would have been converted to DNG if I had selected that on import. So now that we've got this done, I'm gonna go ahead and pop into the develop module and show you guys a couple of the cool differences. All right, the first thing I wanna showcase is the differences in the basic panel. So we've become so used to highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, brightness, contrast, right? Standard sliders that have been around for, you know, in, in this case, since Lightroom 4. Uh, but Lightroom 1, 2, and 3 had a different set of sliders. You'll notice that recovery and fill light don't exist anymore with the current Lightroom process. And this is pretty cool. Recovery actually does the job of the highlights slider in today's Lightroom. Its purpose is to recover detail in the brightest areas of the photo. It kind of does a little bit of highlights, a little bit of whites, right? What the white slider would do. And we can see if we bring it up, sure enough, it does bring a little bit of detail back to those brighter regions. Fill light did the opposite, but with the darkest regions, it would throw fill light into the photo to brighten up the darker areas of the shot. And you'll notice that recovery and fill light are both single direction sliders. We could only recover information in the highlights or recover information in the shadows. We couldn't intentionally lose information there without using other sliders. So that's kind of cool. Um, also blacks only goes up, right? We can only add dark or darken in the blacks. We did have a little bit of reverse. You can see it actually by default starts at five. So you could back it off to zero, which would recover a little bit of information, but mostly that was a one direction slider. Scrolling down, we still had tone curve. We still had HSL. Uh, split toning was a panel back then uh, that's now been integrated with other things. Um, detail was there, a lot less options in detail. No AI denoise, right? Where's our AI denoise here? I don't see it. Uh, lens corrections for chromatic aberration vignetting, things like that. And then camera calibration, right? Which still exists to this day, right? The calibration panel. Now, another big difference is the toolbar, okay? So at the top of our Lightroom Classic currently, there's a toolbar between the basic panel and the histogram, right? And this is where the crop tool is, the spot removal tool, uh, the masking tools, all those different things. Well, that did not exist here. Um, instead, the toolbar was down here at the bottom. You could get it with the letter T, T for toolbar and all we had was three tools. Uh, we had the crop tool, right? Very similar to what we have uh, now, same similar options. Uh, we have the red eye tool to remove red eye from flash and then the spot removal tool and the only option the spot removal tool is how big is the spot and do we want to clone or do we want to heal? It was very much not a retouching tool like it is today where we can like really make big broad strokes improvements and remove things from our images. It was very much for dust spots like, hey, I didn't clean my sensor, I'm shooting at F22, let's zap some dust spots. And it was really good at that, right? You could set your spot size and go in there and clean up those little dust bits. And you all, that was really it, right? No local adjustments, no masking, right? No uh, advanced color grading options. It was bare bones, right? But for the time to integrate editing and organizing into one program, for a lot of us, like me included, I'd been using Adobe Bridge for my organization and Adobe Photoshop for my editing. And to have one program to do both and be able to hop between, I can't tell you not having to go file save or file save as and think of a new file name and it was destructive. It was huge, right? I remember teaching students and uh, I'd have a room full of people and I'd be like, all right, you all, so when you're done editing, you just go G for grid and you don't have to go file save. And, and there'd be like six hands in the other. They'd be like, well, well, wait, how do I save my edits? And I'm like, you don't need to. It's saved in the library. It's saved in the catalog automatically. And that alone, right, that, that simple thing was like a game changing feature for so many people who had been so used to always saving, saving as in accidentally overwriting their original file. It was awesome. But you all, you see, we can still arrow key through, right? Don't need to go save between each shot, right? And just look at that sensor. I mean, truly, like the sensor on the 5D is so good. Um, if you're looking for a cool old camera, I know this is not about the camera at all, but the Canon 5D, the original one, I think this was like $150. Go pick one of these up, uh, KEH, b &H, used, wherever you like buying used stuff. It is an amazing camera. And I really do think the sensor still stands up today.
All right, everybody, that sums up this video. I hope you had fun seeing a little blast from the past of 18 years ago, Lightroom version 1.0. If you did like this video, I would love you to drop a like down below, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. And lastly, let me know down in the comments what your computer, your favorite computer of this time frame was, or let me know what version of Lightroom or Photoshop you started on way back in the day. Thanks everybody, and I'll catch you in the next one.